everyone welcome again it's Joanne today I want to talk about my experience working in a ramen restaurant while I was living in Japan I only just got back from Japan uh, recently I would still be there at this moment but you know so I'll start off by explaining why I was in Japan in the first place. I was actually on a ski season and I was there for a total of about four months. But the plan was really to stay there for pretty much the whole year or at least half half of the year. I was in Niseko, which is a town on the island of Hokkaido, which is the northmost island of Japan. That was my home for four months. I'll probably do another video on my experience as a whole in Japan and I'll go into more detail about other things. So I'd actually secured a job before coming to Japan was to work in a small apre cafe by the bottom of one of the ski slopes. I'd had experience working as a barista before so this job was perfect for me. Basically open from the time the ski lifts opened to when they closed. And guys it was a great job. I literally I got paid more than pretty much I'd say like 90% of most people in the town. Most seasoners, we get basic minimum wage. I think it's pre pretty similar to wages in the UK. I was getting paid 1,600 yen, which is roughly about 12 pounds an hour, plus tips. And my working environment was great. Oh my God, there's a magpie. I literally have no complaints. Like I got to meet people coming down from the slopes from all over the world. You could have conversations with people from Argentina, people from Spain, people from uh, America, Chile, China. Literally, I've met, I met so many people from around the world. It was amazing. It was just me, my boss and one other girl. So it was very close knit. And I'm talking, when I say this place is like small, it was literally like a shack. <laughs> if I was to take three paces across the room, that's it. But then I found I needed more income. Number one, I bought a flexible return ticket to Japan, which is a lot of money. I, like, I'm not gonna lie, it's quite a lot of money. <laughs> so there was that. My wages were taxed in Japan. Look, I don't know the nitty gritty, but all I know is the type of visa I was on, you had to pay about, um, I can't remember the exact number, but it was very close to about 25% of your wages had to go as taxes which is like a lot of money i also had to pay for my snowboard gear so that included buying a new snowboard bindings helmets snowboard boots also had to pay for rent <sighs> my house was nice can i just say weekly food shops and just generally if i wanted to socialize with people so that was a lot of money outgoing and it wasn't quite the income wasn't quite there for me to be comfortable. I personally never like living paycheck to paycheck. I like having a nice amount that I don't really have to be worried about. So then I took it upon myself to go out in the community in the town of Naseko and basically go job hunting. I had no shame. I was walking into all sorts of establishments, all sorts of restaurants, bars, cafes, clubs. I actually secured one interview with this uh, traditional Japanese restaurant. And I'll, I'll also point out that most seasoners, they are usually hired by large companies, sometimes international companies that specifically employ seasoners because it's seasonal work so these their employees are typically not Japanese I went to the interview guys I was so nervous because like everyone that like, obviously I'm in Japan everyone there was Japanese and can I just say I didn't speak a word of Japanese <laughs> most people in this echo spoke English anyway which is great you know it's quite shameful to say that I don't I don't speak Japanese or I knew very, very, very basic words. We emailed back and forth and in one of the emails they must have asked, uh, do you speak any Japanese? And I must have panicked because I really wanted the job and I was like, uh, yeah. What was I thinking? Of course, they caught me out. I went to the interview fully knowing that they weren't gonna hire me, but I went anyway, just because why not? They didn't end up hiring me. So I was like, wow, what am I to do? All the jobs were taken. Um, this time of the season is when jobs have really secured their employees are not really looking for more staff what happened was my colleague that i worked with me and her got got along so well and she had told me about a second job that she had for a few weeks and she was she actually offered to put in a good word for me from what i heard from her she worked in a ramen restaurant and it was actually known to be pretty much one of the best ramen restaurants in Niseko. I got the email address of um, the owner. It's a family run business. Um, it's a husband and wife who run the restaurant themselves and um, they were looking for more staff. Next thing I knew, I was at the interview. So I was very nervous. Like I, I really needed the extra income. They have an afternoon set and an evening set. So between that time is when I had my interview. So the wife, she was absolutely 
amazing. She was so lovely. It's one of the most relaxed interviews I've ever gone for. She spoke fluent English. I believe her mother is American, her dad is Japanese. It was such a nice interview. I pretty much was hired on the spot. Like I was like, you want me? She went through the tasks of the job. She explained everything thoroughly. And I literally got around to signing the contract the day of the interview. But like, you know, the one thing is, guys, it's all in Japanese. <laughs> She didn't have an English version. Literally translated each bit of the contract. But like, I don't know if she's, if that's the truth. I don't know. I was so desperate for a job, guys. <laughs> I signed the contract. <laughs> so she had one copy and I kept one copy. I mean, not that it did me any good. I don't know what it said. And the wages are considerably lower than my other job, but I wasn't really getting tax. Who said that? Who said that? Who said that? So I received my uniform. I really don't know what this says on the back, but I thought it looked cool. And an apron and um, a cap, which I, I didn't wear. I pretty much started within a couple of days. I'll explain the setup of the restaurant. It was tiny, like it was tiny. You had to squeeze past something that I thought was a two seater booth. No, it was for four people. You had to be extremely uh, careful with the way you'd walk around because even just one person going through an, uh, an aisle, like you had to kind of squeeze past, like it was tight. <laughs> in the afternoon, it was uh, the wife who'd be running the restaurant. In the evenings, it was her husband that was running the restaurant. And because I worked during the day at the cafe, I could only do evening shifts. And um, one thing about her husband is he didn't speak English. Now he did speak a few words of English and I'm kind of assuming that he understood more than he said. And she also explained that half of the staff would be English speaking and the other half of the staff would be Japanese speaking. So the people who were in the kitchen were the Japanese speakers and the people who were uh, the waitresses were either only English speakers or bilingual, Japanese and English. So I'm sure you can imagine <laughs> your boss doesn't speak English and half the staff don't speak English either. But actually, funny enough, we actually found a way to communicate with each other and to even have banter, like, it's the weirdest thing ever. One woman, she really did not speak English. I'd be cracking up with her all the time. I really don't know how to explain it, but somehow we ma we managed to laugh with each other. At the cafe, I'd work typically um, varying, varying start times. It can range from about 8.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. Um, and then I'd finish at about 4.30 p.m. I'd then have half an hour to myself um, and then I start my other job at five o'clock and finish between nine to 10.30 p.m. So it was a very long day. And in that half an hour, that's not really just me sitting down. That's like, I have to get the bus. Like, thank God the buses there were free in this small like region. They had shuttle buses, mostly taking skiers from one resort to the other. But I get it every day to get to work and between both my jobs. And I didn't get a break at the cafe. I didn't get a break at the restaurant. I wouldn't recommend that, but I was so driven to get more money. My attitude was just go, go, go. Then also fitting in snowboarding in my free time. That was a bit of a struggle. So my roles as a waitress, that just involves obviously collect taking orders, um, bringing food around, washing up, tidying up after. Oh my God, there was so much cleaning. I can't lie, it was very hard work. They expected you to work. You could not get away with being lazy there. Like there's, there's really no way. Working in that restaurant actually helped to improve my Japanese. Um, I got close with quite a few Japanese employees there. I got close with even the non-Japanese speaking people there. Um, to be honest, at my other jobs, because since it was just me and one other girl, it actually isolated me in a way because um, I didn't get to make that many close relationships but then working at the second job allowed me to meet all people and we end I ended up going boarding with them a couple of times and even going for drinks on a couple of occasions. We got to take home a staff meal every night so guys unlimited ramen. I got proper authentic Japanese food two to three times a week. It was amazing. Their specialty was like a potato ramen so in Hokkaido, um, they produce most of the potatoes for Japan. Their ramen specialty was like a potato cream on top. Oh, it was so good. Like potatoes were everywhere. The town mascot is a skiing potato. <laughs> I think if I didn't work there, I would have felt pretty much quite isolated. I wouldn't have, I would have had the chance to meet so many people. What was funny is that people would see me in the morning making their coffee and then they'd come to the restaurant at night and I'd be there again. When Brits would come through the door, like there's just something about meeting other British people when you're abroad. And it's just like, 
I see you. <laughs> I will say the downsides of working there is um, the way the rota was done is that there would be a balance of English speakers and Japanese speakers, but I think it was like once or twice where I, I ended up being the only um, English speaking person. And of course there were bilingual people, but you know, if you have Japanese speaking people, bilingual people, and then one English person, the overall language that's being spoken is Japanese. So there was a couple of times where, you know, everyone was there having a conversation. I was just like, you know what it is? I didn't mind. It didn't really bother me. Like I'm in Japan, so I'm not going to be, I, I think it's kind of um, entitled to think that everyone should be speaking English all the time, but that didn't really happen all the time. So that's really like a very minor, like, negative it's not very customary for japanese to accept tips now we had a lot of american customers one thing i like about americans is they like to tip <laughs> but when i was getting tips at my other job like i could get up to maybe like i think i got the most i got in a week was about 50 pounds in tips but at the ramen restaurant they don't really accept tips you're not allowed to, to accept tips so if they would leave tips it would go in a box and I don't know where it went. <laughs> there were a few rude customers. A particular nation of people were particularly rude. There was one instance where this man, he was um, actually, I could tell he was a rich guy and he was from China. From the time he walked in, just rude. He was so entitled. He wouldn't even look at us when we were serving or taking the order. If I placed him somewhere, he's like, no, I'm not sitting there. I would rather sit here. Yeah, I said, uh, yeah, sure, if you want. It's like, so is, is that okay? That's fine. I can sit there. <laughs> hey, you're not catching attitude with me. But obviously, I'm working. I can't be showing my, my true colours like that. So I'm in another place. The food was not on time for him. The food was not placed there correctly. The, the drinks were not uh, fast enough for him. The bill did not come fast enough for him either. When he wanted to pay, he literally stood up. You know these scenes in movies where you get, like, outrageously rude people in these restaurants? My guy stood up in front of the whole restaurant and was like, Can I pay, please? What kind of service is going on in this restaurant? Can I pay or should I just leave? Is that what you want? Do you want me to leave without paying? I had to hold my turn because the way I was feeling, if I go mad, they'll say I'm mad. I'm slapping people now and I start going mad. Everybody starts acting like I'm mad. So, you know, that was not fun. It wasn't very often it happened. Um, there was a culture crash sometimes. I think Westerners are very used to being accommodated for literally every one of their needs. So, you know, the saying the customer is always right. That didn't apply there. It's like what we say goes. If you don't like it, you don't have to stay here. <laughs> Having been to a few ramen restaurants, the kind of atmosphere it is, is that you step into the restaurant, order, eat your ramen, pay, you leave. There's no sitting down, talking for like extended periods of time with friends and family. You literally just step in to eat and you go. I even noticed that with actual um, Japanese people there, they would typically come in, eat their food, pay, leave. They wouldn't sit about, be chatting for like, chatting with their friends for, hours on end and one thing with this restaurant oh my god i forgot to say they had lines every single night like queues well around the restaurant around the car park it was always a busy night they're literally it's there's no oh is it busy t tonight no it's always busy we had a, a waiting list that was just stuck on the outside of the restaurant that was just always there because there was always a line it was that's how popular it was it was just always always busy and if we stayed to the end of the season we would receive a small bonus which was very nice obviously due to our current current situation things ended very abruptly so we went from being packed out every single night customers uh rolling up at the door from before we open to when we close to pretty much no customers maybe like maybe five customers within a whole shift guys like it was it was dramatic the way tourism was affected in Niseko. We thought we'd be lasting until right to the end of the season, but obviously the way things panned out, we had to close up shop early. It was quite sad. We ended up having a very nice staff meal. It was lovely. It was nice to have that final meal of everyone. I'm still in touch with a few people from the restaurant to this day. And yeah, would I do it again? I don't think so. But do I regret it? Absolutely not. Everyone made me feel welcome. I didn't feel excluded. Everyone did their job. You can imagine working 14 hours a day. It can be very stressful on your mind and your body. It can be very stressful, but I'm glad that there were, everyone was there doing their job, putting their weight, and it made things more enjoyable, really. So guys, that's it for this video. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions. If you yourself are considering working abroad, 
um, I definitely recommend it. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And yeah, guys, I'll see you on the next one.